Okay. Here we go. Um, it's a little later than I anticipated, but here's the update on family court stuff. Um, today, well, yesterday was Monday, July 9th, which was when technically the hearing was set for um, several motions that um, my lawyer and I are presenting, as well as Alana Tanner's motion to reduce my visitation. It's a whole thing. Um, but if you know how family court works, or court in general, um, it was very well anticipated that today's hearing would be reset for another time during the week because it's a three hour hearing. It's the first time ever, um, well, since my um, protective order hearing back in January of 2016, where I actually get to like speak and testify um, both for and against the things that we are presenting and what <sighs> evil people like Alana Tanner and CASA and CPS and Mike Rentner and Justin and pretty much everybody other than my lawyer will be throwing at us at this hearing. Um, but this is all a good thing. Anyway, um, so I show up today because, well, there's like a 1% chance that the judge is just feeling feisty this week and wants to do a three-hour hearing on Monday. Um, and, well, I care about my kids so much that I want to be there when... Uh, to hear when the hearing will be reset and just in case there's um, a possible issue that might come up. Um, so I'm there and I am pretty sure Justin was not there. He's 6'4", he's hard to miss. I could have missed him but I'm pretty sure he's not there but I definitely saw Mike Rittner in his like creepy trench coat kind of thing going on. Um, I was in the courtroom by 8.30, um, listened to the whole docket, and uh, Judge Byrne said that um, our three-hour hearing would be set for this Friday, and my awesome lawyer, May, was next to me, and I asked her, what's the date this Friday? And she said, the 13th, and I thought, that's perfect, that is exactly right. Um, I'm good with that date. Uh, so we leave, that's all I needed to know. I was gonna go home, uh, but May and I go and talk privately. And as we are talking, the advocates are, um, advocates I mean Alana, Casa, and of course, Mike Rentner, uh, they have an issue with Friday. Um, Justin can't make it, Casa can't make it, and Alana can't make it. Uh, and I ask May, uh, so wh why does that matter? Um, because the problem for those of you that either don't know how family court works or don't know how abuse by proxy works, I've waited months to get these motions set and heard in front of a judge. Like my visitation, my um, ability to go to doctor's appointments, my access to my children has been on hold for weeks and I am pretty sure months. Um, so I've waited for a long time for this, for this three hour hearing and for my ability to have testimony against my mental health that Alana Tanner continuously attacks based solely on what my abuser tells her. Um, so I was not about to wait another week or two weeks um, just for more and more conflicts to come up. This is, this is an abuse tactic. This is what they do. This is what they have done um, for the entire time, but especially in the last few weeks. You just keep on saying conflict here, conflict there and meetings can't take place, they don't take place, they just randomly, they're scheduled, but they randomly just don't happen, Alana. Um, and 
for once I had something that a judge scheduled and I asked my lawyer if CASA can't be there if we have to wait for the psych eval to be an official thing I can wait for that I cannot wait I cannot wait to hopefully have Judge Byrne say that my daughter's first haircut won't be done without me or I can't wait another week um I've been juggling trying to schedule my daughter's blood draw for her one year um checkup so she's long overdue and they keep on pressuring me to schedule it and I so want to schedule it I wanted to schedule it like two three months ago but here's the problem if I schedule it then that counts as a doctor's visit. And right now, it's set up to where the next doctor visit is a dentist appointment, and that's supposed to be Justin's visit. And the, the appointment after that is supposed to be the allergist, which is the appointment that everybody knows that I want to go to. And you guys, if I set this blood draw appointment before Friday, before I get a judge to hopefully say that I can just keep on going to doctor's appointments like I always have, which is every single one. Beth is going to reschedule the dentist appointment to where the next appointment is Justin's and it's the allergist appointment, the one I can't go to. This is the problem with alternating appointments. And in the last two weeks, Beth has rescheduled both allergist and dentist appointments because of Um, things she didn't anticipate with the schedule. She didn't anticipate that I would not be at the dentist appointment. It's a whole thing. I'm already going way too long on this, but it's that kind of, it's that kind of bullshit that I cannot wait another week. I cannot go another visitation without a judge hearing the bullshit I've been going through. I cannot wait another week for Alana Tanner to figure out a way to use a victim's PTSD in a way to um, re-victimize her and reduce visitation with her three-year-old and her one-and-a-half-year-old. So, as we're talking, this happens... Uh, May and I split up around 10 and I go to HEB, have this really great experience that I'll tell you about later because I want to keep this short. Um, And around 11, my lawyer tells me that at 1230, the advocates are going to approach Judge Byrne and uh, ask if they can reschedule because of so many conflicts. Um, So I've got nothing else to do. I was prepared to possibly have a trial today or a hearing today. So I tell her I'll be there. So we show up at the courthouse. 1230 comes around. We're all there. (laughs) And guys, I'm not going to get a lot of victories here. But what happened today was, was one of those moments where, like, it doesn't mean a whole lot, but it means a whole lot. Um, Erica Heim tried to... They, they try to play it off like everyone had a conflict, but my lawyer, my awesome lawyer, May, stood up and said, we don't have a conflict, and we have four motions. We have the most motions out of everybody to present, and we're ready, because, uh, uh, I don't know, we know how family court works, and we know that we should have expected that this was going to be reset, and... I didn't know that this thing existed, but there's apparently like this thing. I don't want to say what it is because I don't exactly remember. It's like kafa or something. Um, but apparently the attorneys and the ad litems and everyone sign a thing to where they agree that when a hearing is reset, that if they cannot be there, they will prov- provide a sub. So luckily Judge Byrne was in a good mood today and as everyone was complaining about how they couldn't make it on Friday, she brought up this thing and um, 
she looked to May, and May basically, May basically said, well, we're cool. And then Erica Heim tried to say, well, um, Justin, the father can't make it, um, and it's really important that he make it. And Byrne just kind of looked to Rentner like, and? And Rentner's, I don't know, he was all like, he showed up like 30 minutes early, but he was so not ready for, I guess, any question. And he just said, um, I, I don't know, um, uh, he, he's not able to make it, but I'm not sure, like, how, how not able to make it he is, and, uh, I don't really remember if Byrne said anything to that, but from my interpretation, she basically rolled her eyes as I did and said, um, don't care, y'all figure it out, but the parties that seem most necessary to be there are ready as they should be and everybody else should be so we're going to keep it to this friday at 10 a.m friday the 13th it's poetic it's humorous it's um well it's not next week which is what the advocates are trying to go for and um the only downside is that um <laughs> Ugh. It's so ridiculous. And the motion that Alana wrote up is so horribly written up. It's so, it's so Alana. Um, but the only downside is that if things go wrong on Friday, it's possible that I won't have my visitation on Sunday. Um... Alana's trying to cut back my visitation from eight hours on Sunday to two hours a week at the CPS location, which is, um, that's where I started back in November. And I only did it like once or twice until I was able to go back so I could like, I guess, clear whatever and have supervised visits with my parents. So um, if something terrible happens, it's possible I don't have Sunday and that happens. But um, it's a three hour hearing and I get to speak and I get to work. I get to, I get to have a voice. And I get to have a voice in front of a judge who saw the bullshit that happened today. And she saw it. And I get to have a voice against Alana. And I get to have a voice. Not against Justin. But. I get to have a voice about. What I went through. And what. I have been going through, especially since the kids were taken. And I get to speak about my motherhood. And let's see, it's July 10th. And since my kids were taken on October 26th, I haven't had a chance to have that voice yet. Not in front of a judge. I get my blog, which people see. The judge may have even seen it. But that's only because that's the only way I have a voice. And I had to fight really hard to get this hearing not only set, but to have all the motions on it that are on there and to keep it this week. <laughs> I had to go back to a courthouse where I have to battle PTSD episodes um, just so I could show that I fucking care enough to not waste any more time because I cannot agonize over getting my, being there to have my daughter's blood drawn. I can't do it anymore and I shouldn't have to. And I should be allowed a voice. I should be able to have a voice for that. So that is most of the family court update. Also, um, no offense, Casa, I think, bullshit 
uh, total bullshit. Uh, great that they want to get rid of the psych evaluation. That is still a really big deal. That's still a really big step. Um, but I just keep on finding out information that shows me that that was just a tactic to try to show that they were doing something, but all they did was take away a three hour um, service plan thing so they could add two service plan obligations that one is to see another psychiatrist other than the one that I'm already seeing um, and go to safe place and do intake there and see a counselor there so that would mean I'm seeing three different mental health professionals a week um, two psychiatrists even though my psychiatrist is on record saying that the only psychiatrist that could truly treat me to my benefit would have to um, specialize in eating disorders and he's the only one in Texas that currently specializes in eating disorders it's a whole thing um, but I call bullshit on you Casa um, they also ignore my phone calls um, Jessica from CPS ignores my phone calls Alana doesn't even talk to me unless she wants to just like randomly send some like bullying email that asks about something that has nothing to do with the email like I sent an email about haircuts and her reply was why haven't you taken a drug test so like I check my email I think she actually has a response caring about my fear of my daughter's hair being cut without me and nope it's just uh, something to do with drug tests which is traumatizing to me which she knows but she doesn't care um, and by the way this is me just going on record before I peace out here um, if Lily's hair is cut before Friday I can't change that this is one of the like AA things which Beth knows all about because she was at Al-Anon um, I can't control what's happened can't control what could happen but if it happens that is like that is going to be the biggest sign of abuse they know I have text messages about Grayson with Beth that shows that she knows what I'm, it's silly but I'm a mom but she knows what these haircuts mean to me I Lily's hair is so fluffy and I want to cut it myself my, I have video of my mom cutting my own hair when I was that age and I want to do it myself I couldn't do Grayson's because I'm not not to be sexist but I'm not a boy and and his hair grew differently but Lily's is just like mine was and I want to cut it myself and I'll give Beth clippings of course but I want that and if Justin wants to be there for that I don't care but I'm so afraid they're gonna take that away from me that I had to go back to court today to fight to make sure that no more time was wasted no more visit on Saturday happened where another haircut could happen without me. But if it happens, this video exists and this voice exists. And everyone will know what they took away from me. But whatever. I've got four, three days, whatever. And who knows if Justin will figure it out and if he can make it. Who knows if Alan will figure it out. I don't really care. I just care that I get a chance to talk. I get three hours. We get three hours. And for the first time, I think Judge Byrne will get to see me in a way that's not through my blog that everyone villainizes. Blah. Anyway. There it is. This took too long. I don't really care. It's 4 a.m. And I'm sad. And this is my life. But 
um, hey, if anyone wants to come, 10 a.m., Friday the 13th, you can make really fun signs you, and stand outside. We can make it a media thing. And it could be, you can tie it into the border crisis. Eh? Does that make it more desirable? Do you want to support me more then? Because this is like about people stealing babies and about people like Alana Tanner who are supposed to be voices, legal voices for the children and like people like Casa that are supposed to be like just voices for the children who support separating very young children from their mother just because they want to punish her for, well, being too smart. Help me expose CPS. Help me expose Alana Tanner. Help me expose Rachel, what is it, Rachel Jackson from CASA. Let's do this. You don't have to be vocal. Just sit in the courtroom quietly. Be respectful. Follow the rules. Sit outside. I don't care. But you have a chance to support not just me, but the border crisis and the government stealing children and separating them from their safe, primary attachment figure battered mothers that are 100% American citizens. <laughs>